this deal was trading at 160,000 a unit. Rents were 900 bucks. It fit everything in the buy right. It was beautiful, 80s build. It was in a great area, uh, 190 plus units. It was just beautiful, the unit mix. We loved everything about it, except Jake and Gino here, and today we're discussing the top pitfalls. Oh, we're going dark here in multifamily investing. Gang, look, it's a great vehicle. There's no doubt about it, but you must be aware of the downside. So with that being said, we are going to take a view through our framework, the buy right, manage right, finance right lens. We're going to unpack this sucker today. Gino, how's it going? There is light at the end of the tunnel, Jake. Only I'm doing we're in headgear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great, my friend. How you doing? Always making it happen, big man. So, Gino, let's start. Uh, you know, again, we're talking buy right, manage right, and finance right, and we're going to isolate each component and and look at the the downside risk. So, what's the major hurdle on the buying side, the the buy right component? What do you got to watch out for when you're buying an apartment? It's a great question because most students, when they join, the first thing they say is, "I need to find a deal. Oh, I need a deal," and, and then I always backtrack and I say to them. Well, what's a good deal for you? Mm. I don't know anything that cash flows. Well, if you take that perspective and listen, I've done that. That was my very first deal almost 20 years ago. I lost $172,000 because I was worrying about cash flow and not understanding what my, my buy right criteria was. And if you want to learn more and take a deeper dive, go to jakeandgino.com forward slash webinar. We've done several webinars on how to buy these assets. Sign up for the next webinar. It's coming July 28th at 8 p.m. They're live. Just go to jakeandgino.com forward slash webinar, sign up for it. We're there. We answer questions live. But specifically, when you're buying multifamily, and, and I would venture if you're doing single family or, or self-storage or any asset in real estate, our framework can be adopted to any asset. We just love to teach multifamily because we think it's one of the best vehicles out there. There's so much demand for it. We're becoming a renter nation. When you're doing the buy right, Focus on your criteria. What are you trying to buy? Are you trying to focus on capital appreciation? Are you focusing on a cash flowing asset? Are you looking for these things, as we like to say, buy right and sit tight? Or are you younger and you need to stack equity and get into that next deal and build the equity? It depends where you are in your journey, what you're trying to accomplish. Figure out what your buy right criteria is. The very first thing is, especially if you're starting out and you're brand new, what market are you in? Jake, I don't want you in six or seven different markets if you're just starting out because you're not an expert in any of them. Focus on one specific market. Then from there, let's get really granular. Talk about the unit mix. Talk about the vintage, the age of the asset. Talk about the mean and income. What neighborhoods do you want to be in? Talk about the amenities of the asset. I mean, there's so many things you need to focus on to create that buy right criteria. If you don't have one, then everything is a deal. And if everything's a deal, then nothing is a deal. And no deal is better than a bad deal. Hey, we did our work for the day. We can hang up now because I think it's chew on that. All right. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. You nailed it, though. I think that's absolutely correct. I just, you know, so many people, to your point, are, are you know, in a rush. They got to get their itis and they're, give me a deal, give me a deal, give me a deal. Be very clear on what that is to Gino's point. Otherwise, you have a potential landmine sitting in front of you. You're, I, I hear you. You're like, you're like Revan here. Do you, do you, do you have something to add to that? Or you want me to go to my next question? No, no. Let me add something. I really know you, man. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You feel me, brother. Let, let me, let me add, add something really quick because I think what happens is people get confused. They think they need to get into multifamily to scale up to a thousand units. The two jabronis that you're listening to right now, if we had done a hundred units, we would have been thrilled because if we did a hundred units, at $200 of profit per unit on those 100 units, that would have been $20,000 a month in cash flow from those 100 units. It would have been 10,000 for Jake and 10,000 for Gino. Let's not even talk about the cost segregation or the refinance. We would have been thrilled. So if you're out there thinking- I just yourself, replaced I my job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. Think about that, Jake. We don't really talk about that that much. We're always talking about go bigger, go faster, go better. You can get into multifamily and accumulate 50, 60, 80, 100, 150 units if you do the business right. And I know your, your next question is about manage right. 
Let's get to that in 10 seconds. But I want to change your paradigm. Don't worry about getting the next deal. If you can really focus on buying good quality deals, if you can buy a 50 or 100 unit deal every year for the next five years, at the end of five years, you're going to have four to 500 units. And if your profit per unit is $200, profit per unit on 400 units, that's $80,000 a month in profit per unit on that portfolio. Even if you have to split that three ways, you're still doing about 15 to 20 grand a month in profit per unit. That's amazing. We always lose sight of that because we're always thinking about going bigger and going better. Think about your buy right criteria. Think about buying really good quality deals and think about buying for the longer term where you're going to be able to buy these assets. You exit them through refinancing or through selling and continue working on that buy right criteria. That'll more than cover the cost of your Kia Sereno lunch at Chick-fil-A and your apartment rental and maybe even an iPhone. <laughs> Nowadays, yes. Well, Not inflation's bad. down to four percent, so I think I think we'll be okay, right? You'll be all right. All right, so hit the management. The manage right. The two jabronis on on the call again. One of them's driving a tractor, and the other one's the other one's doing QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it comes down to. We're full around here. We're not. We don't have. I don't Give know what a KPI. Give some context. <laughs> we don't even know what a KPI is. We, we buy our first few deals. We're doing everything. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And I'm a needs to do that because I'm a needs to learn how to run the business in the very beginning. But as you start scaling, you need to learn how to actually put some systems and processes in place. I wish I had a Jake and Gino community when we started out. Our students have done over 70,000 units right now. That's one of the draws. That's one of the unique selling propositions that we have with the Jake and Gino community is we have our property managers as coaches. So we have students coming on that have 100 units, 150 units. They are where we were. They had no systems. They had no processes. They have no weekly pulse. They have no property logs. They have none of that. They're running it as a solopreneur, which is okay when you have 30 or 40 units. But once you hit that threshold of 60 units and above, all of a sudden you need to start hiring. You need to start creating a website. You need to start creating collections because you can't do everything on yourself because your highest and best use is going out there buying the next deal or getting money from that next investor. And you need to manage it as well. But you can manage while you're doing those other two functions. You just need to learn what we call the cadence of accountability, those touch points every week you need to create with a third-party property management company. Or if you're hiring internally, you do it yourself. You need to create all of a sudden those KPIs, those weekly level 10 meetings you have with team members. That's so important that if you don't do that, all of a sudden the wheels start coming off because multifamily, and let me say this to everybody out there, if you're investing in real estate in any genre, whether you're in single families, whether you're in mobile home parks, it is a business and it's a beautiful business because it's scalable, it has amazing tax benefits and you get paid every month. So you have to understand the managed side of the business. Strip the business down to its most simplest components. We have students coming into the community that don't that own apartments currently that don't know how much they're making every month. Hmm. Number one, start with KPIs that are so important. And the number one KPI that's so important is profit per unit. You need a draw report for every entity that you own at the end of the month. So you're calculating how much money you're actually making, and then you're breaking that profit per unit down. So you made twenty thousand on a hundred units. You divide twenty thousand by a hundred. Boom that gives you your PPU or profit per unit. Every week, Gino mentioned a pulse report. Well, what the hell is that? A pulse report are the most important KPIs sent out to yourself and any other key principles on your team. So as a team collectively, you're reviewing, looking for any potential issues so you can get in front of them so it's not after the fact. If you're relying on a property management company to send you the end of the month report, you've already lost because guess what? The vacancies weren't filled. The money wasn't made. The delinquencies weren't collected. You're behind the eight ball. We want to be forward thinking. We want the numbers coming out weekly, and then we can question and push when needed to, to make the business produce the results that we need. I would challenge you. If you're listening to this right now and you're struggling with manage, right? We we're, we've been there. Just go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. Get on the call with Scott, with one of our team members. See how working together, see how we can help you improve the profit per unit. See how we can help you with the term process, with the move-in process, with the process of talking to third-party property management because that's really important. Now, we've gone on buy right. We've gone on manage right. The third component is finance right. And I want to share this story with you. I, I know Jake remembers this deal because this deal actually fit our buy right price parameters. It was two years ago. This deal was trading at 160000 a unit. Rents were 900 bucks. It fit everything in the buy right. It was beautiful. 80s build. It was in a great area. Uh, 190 plus units. 
Um, it was just beautiful. The unit mix. We loved everything about it, except we're buying a stabilized deal on bridge financing. And we're like saying to ourselves, hold on a second, rents are 900 for an asset that's 160,000 unit. We've got to go to 1,600, possibly 1,800 in rents within the next two years. It's risky. We didn't do the deal. Now, we don't know how that deal's turned out, but it's one of those where it's marginal at best. And we're so thankful because guess what happened? Rates were three and a half. They shot up to nine now. So if you're but we didn't break our principles, Gino, that's the key. We've always yes. preached long term fixed rate debt. And we had a, a member on the team that was really saying, Hey, let's just let's just do bridge on this, get it out, and we'll get it out. And we're saying, eh, we don't do bridge debt. We we like longer term fixed rate financing. That's been one of our, our core tenets from the beginning. And we stuck to our guns and thank God we did because that thing would be an alligator right now. And Absolute let me disaster. But Jake, we, we do do we do do some type of bridge. It's called loan to cost. Talk about the loan to yeah, cost because that's important. Fixed rate financing, though, that's the yes. difference. Yes. So, so yes, you're taking on a recourse component of it, but we do loan to cost with banks, where essentially we're getting at least a five year fixed rate deal, so we can go in, do our thing, give us five years of, of rate fluctuation, so we can you know have a better chance of timing it on an exit to more permanent long term uh, ten year fixed debt. Uh, but that's what we do. They go in, the bank finances our renovation, uh, typically eighty percent LTC with a couple years IO. And we call it a day. It's it's a beautiful thing. And it's important. I, I don't want to bash all bridge financing because in some deals, it, it's really important. But we were buying a stabilized asset on bridge. Now, this yep. is not something where we had CapEx and we're like, okay, there, there's a lot of work we need to be done. We had to retenant the entire property within 24 months. And bridge financing, I, I will warn everybody, read the fine print. It is so expensive because 160000 a unit went, w- would have gone to 170 a, a door easily with all the closing costs, with all the fees. So all of a sudden you're at 170 before you even start. And then the, 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 t- the clock is ticking. If all of a sudden the economy shifts or interest rates go up even more, then guess what? You're not going to hit your debt service coverage components within two years. And why and you're do all stuck. that work for a mediocre deal? And all that exactly. pressure and shit. It's not worth it. Exactly. So to wrap this whole thing up, don't be Jake and Gino sitting on a tractor, editing podcasts, doing all that menial work when you've got seven or eight units. Learn how to scale the business. Learn how to focus on your buy right criteria. What is your buy right criteria? So when you talk to brokers and when you talk to investors, you know exactly what you're focused on and you will sound professional and they will not ask you for a proof of funds because they know you're serious. They know that you have equity investors. And the manage right, which is the most important part, it's the wheel of the wheelbarrow. That's where most investors just forget about it. It's not sexy. If you're not good at that, hire someone somebody, find somebody that you can partner with because asset management and property management are two of the most important components. I think in any business, minding your books and understanding the cash flows in your business will allow you to buy that next deal and allow you to continue to pay yourself and your investors. Well said, Gino gang. As always, we believe in buying deals for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He is the G daddy and we make it happen. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode.